After Buzzers, what is up? We have high hopes for Alex. We have low lows for Valerie. And it looks like Laura's on a road trip and we don't know when she's coming back. Plus, we have a special guest. Stick around. We're going to get into it. Ep 11, fire sale of casual. And You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. So this is our jam song for tonight, people, because we have such happiness in F11. Fire Sale really gives us Alex having a great time. So we have lovely so day, much to dish on. You will. It is a full, <laughs> lovely day. I'm Elizabeth Alfano. Great to have you back with me and my lovely co-host. If you want to find me, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Dinner Party CHGO. And then all my celebrity interviews are on the dinnerparty.tv. Plus, I'm still on Facebook. Even if many of you are not, I still am on Facebook. So we also have the lovely Kaylee Rose with hey, me right here. Hey, after buzzers, what is up? I'm Kaylee Rose, and you can find me on social media at Kaylee Rose, and check out my animated series, Between Busts. And we have our special guest. What is better? Xander Lehman is in the house. Woo! Hello. Writer, creator, executive producer of Casual, the whole series. And um, Xander. How old are you? <laughs> I just turned 30. I had a birthday this week. Woo! Crazy. Happy belated. Year Thank three you. of Casual, which means you started it at 27. Yeah. It was, uh, it's been a quite, it's been a quite a ride. Three years. You are. It is just sick. I want to say so. you're a modern medical marvel, but that's not <laughs> quite the phrase. Thank you. Thank you very that much. <laughs> appreciate that. Of and you've got world peace under your belt. So I mean, I'm you've done a lot for the world. Well, well, not peace in this family. No, no, no. <laughs> Let's break it down a little bit. Now that we have the insider scoop because we have the writer here, there's so much we want to talk to you about, particularly with Val's character, but we're not going to start out with Val. We're going to start with the really happy parts. So here we have Leah and Leon. Yay! Gosh, how I love them. Okay, so gosh, how I love them, and I love how this transpires. <sighs> you, no one sees this coming, at least I didn't. Mm -hmm. I thought they were about to break up. I thought she was cheating. Of course, you that led was, us to believe that's that. That's what the intention or was. Or it was like a cheating drug deal, you know? Because <laughs> I was like, what, who is Mark? Who is she schedulely texting well, in the I bathroom? Thought, you know? I thought Her she was going to break up. Yeah. With, yeah, who knew? I thought she was going to break up with yeah. them, saying like, actually, this is too perfect. I can't do it. I know. But instead, like, she says like, <laughs> I want it to be this way all the time. And meanwhile, and I thought this was so funny, so a real true sort of tip of the hat to that mm. it's a comedy show, because so much in the show is drama. Mm. But there's this funny music that starts mm. while she's almost breaking up and then not really. Yeah. And Leon's like, is this a commercial? What's going on? <laughs> he thinks it's a breakup too. She my does. heart was just out of my body on the table like, no! We had them for like one episode of right. Bliss, and then they're gonna break up, but no. No, they're in and it. And kudos to you for having a woman propose to a man. Thank you. The episode Thank you. written by two women, directed by a woman, obviously. Wonderful. Uh, they put that spin on there. It's incredible, because there's such a stigma on it. Like, I reached out to my fiance on um, online dating, and I still regret it, because I reached out to You're him. Kidding. I do. Wow. I want to oh, be the traditional girl. woman, but at the same time, power to me, power to Leah. Yeah. She, oh, she knows man. what she wanted. So yeah. I think this whole episode around this is really interesting because here you have later, and we'll get into it, but Val, who's asked to be a bridesmaid, and usually women are clamoring to be bridesmaids. Mm -hmm. She wants nothing to do with it. Men usually want nothing to do with the wedding, and here you have Alex, like, dying to be a groomsman. He just wants it. He wants <laughs> oh, it. Yeah. So I loved all the role reversals throughout the whole episode, uh -huh. actually. I thought it was super fun. But let's get into a little bit of the characters. We're going to talk about characters up and down, how the arcs happen throughout this episode. So we have this wonderful scene with Lee and Lee. And she says, you're my survival partner. And it's just happy, happy, joy, joy. <laughs> so then we go to Alex and Judy. So we, we continue the joy here, I think, with Alex in this episode. So they're having sex. And I'll say it's the only time there's sex in this episode. <laughs> sometimes the episode is like all sex. But we only have one real sex scene going on. I should count back. Like, OK, oh. this episode has one. This episode is zero. Like, are there any that have zero? Oh, I don't there's know. Been, there's been some zeros zero this year. Sex? But there's been some big, right. there's been some heavy ones sometimes early on, too. Three, exactly. you know, like four, ones. five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stringing right along. Mm -hmm. I like yes. the more sex episodes. I'm going to call her out. Call that right now. Oh, you are. Oh, you're I'm calling into the it. more sex episodes. Good to know. Oh. We'll Five write to that. We will write to that for you. Five Let Hulo in on what you yeah. just learned. So, but they're all happy. They're rolling around after sex and, you know, Alex showing his true, I am a boy. Uh -huh. I just, I'm having fun. It's all about me. This is good, good, good. And I'm going to say like, they're 
roommate child, mm-hmm. Ray. She's like their child, right? Comes she in. hops on the bed like a frog. Boundaryless. <laughs> Boundaryless and sits on the bed with them. And is like chanted up. And Alex doesn't really notice the difference. He's, He's like, fine this with is all, you know, we might he be naked, no boundaries as but well. it doesn't exactly. really matter. Yeah, exactly. But Judy <laughs> has some boundaries, and so she eventually has to say, okay, Well, she's an adult go. with yeah. a child. She's a real person. So, <laughs> right. you know. Yes, and but I have to hand it to her character. She's a pretty chill character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she handles Alex with a grain of salt. She mm-hmm. sort of says, I'm naked. And I have to go get my son. <laughs> Sorry to be like the party Hello. crusher. Yes. Yeah. But kudos to you guys. I'm going to say it twice. Kudos, kudos. Um, in the casting, because Judy Greer is fantastic. Uh, the woman Judy who plays Greer. Ray, I can't think of her name right now, fantastic. Maya Erskine, they're both yes. amazing. Yeah. Really, really good actresses. Everyone is so spot on. You have the best guest stars. We really do. We're so ever. lucky. Yeah. We're so lucky. Chase Crawford. I know we're not there anymore, but I'm going to go back to Chase Crawford. Some good sex there. there. Yeah. 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 Oh, I know. We, had, we talked it. about the butt shots a lot. Mm-hmm. He's got a great butt. What are you going to do? Chung. Yeah. I went home that night inspired. Like, she was a feline in the sack. Do you remember that scene? Well, I, I do. I, I remember that scene, but I also remember throughout the series there have been some great guests, like mm-hmm. Vincent Carthizer, yeah. and I mean, some really wonderful big guests. And I was wondering, and I'm getting off topic because we do want to go through our <laughs> characters, here. but uh, I, yeah, we're here. I was wondering, <laughs> do you write for people specifically? Like, you say, oh, I'm going to get Vincent. And then you write around his talents. We've been set. really lucky. Vincent was someone we thought of, and we were able to get him. It was perfect timing. And Judy, uh, Greer, her character was named Judy Green because we were like, this is Judy Greer, we have to get her. And one of our producers, Helen Esterbrook, is friends with her and talked to her and we, again, so lucky to get her. She's amazing. That's she fantastic. is amazing. Yeah. And so that's been one of the highlights, at least for me, yeah. of all of the, the series, is that you have this really strong writing and these characters that are working it out and struggling. And then you have all these cameos mm-hmm. that are just so mm-hmm. great It's like a look who's coming to dinner kind yes, of thing. Right, yeah. yeah, that's a yeah. good Alex's yeah. doorbell yeah. rings. Yeah. Is it going to be? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Game oh, yeah. night. Who are we writing for now? Oh. Okay, so let's get back a little bit to yeah. Alex. So Alex is kind of showing his true colors with Judy, and then he's kind of showing his true colors with Leon because he wants groomsmen, groom, groomsmen, groomsmen. Mm. But Ray says, well, you know, what kind of a friend have you really been to Leon? Yeah, and he needed to hear that. And yeah. he, this is what I love about Alex in this moment. He's mature enough, and he wouldn't have been before. He's mature enough to hear it. Mm-hmm. So he says, like, yeah, but Leon's a saint, and I can't be Saint Leon. I can't. You can't hold me to those standards. But he starts to realize what he's missing, mm-hmm. what he's missing in his relationships, and he's actually taking Ray's advice to heart. So mm-hmm. he, this is a big, in my opinion, a big episode for Alex. Yeah. Totally. Huge arc for him. He starts thinking about other people for the first time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He builds Leon an office. He's, he's growing up. In his home. He's growing up. Becoming a, a friend. beautiful gesture. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and I, I actually love that office because it had like sparkly lights. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah I thought Laura's it was really old good. room is now Leon's <laughs> office. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. That's going to get complicated. Exactly. <laughs> and then he gets the uh, apology espedistra. No. Alex. Alex. Aloe vera. Yeah. Yeah. Aloe vera. She's like, yes. you didn't have to do this, like touching it. Like, mm-hmm. thank but, you. <laughs> again, Judy Greer and the char- characters mm-hmm. you've written it, so wonderful. She doesn't say, like, there are no flowers. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, a weed. She doesn't do that. She <laughs> says, like, hey, that's super fun. It's a soothing plant. And yeah. kind of rolls with yeah. it. So, yeah, yeah. Like she that. appreciates him for what he is, I think, so far. She does. Yeah. It's fun for her. It's fun for her in the moment. You know, Mm -hmm. it's not that serious for her. He's he's the guy who sends her an aloe and finally is able to have sex with her. (laughs) Right, right. And so, but it does it does kind of soothe her, as you Mm -hmm. say, warm her up because she ends up going to the engagement party, Mm -hmm. which she was like, I don't know if I can. Who am I going to get a a babysitter? Right. How's Mm -hmm. that going to work out? But so so Alex is on this wonderful trajectory, and at the end, you see them dancing, Mm -hmm. and um, he's even conscientious about Ray at home. He's like, I don't want to make too much noise when I'm moving boxes, Mm -hmm. and you know. He's starting to give back and, and form relationships. Yeah, yeah. that's what he wants. Um, but that is what he wants. There, we've talked about this a lot. Mm. There have been times when he's even wanted a baby, or yeah. you yeah. know, thinks he wants a baby. Yeah, yeah. poor thing doesn't. Yeah, whether or not the reality would be what he yeah. wants. Uh-huh. But yeah. I loved even when they mentioned like, oh yeah, we're still looking for someone to oversee the ceremony. He's like, I'll do it. I'm I, I'm on it. Like, yep. He loves it. We weren't asking, okay, fine. You know, and he just takes that position, and that's a crucial, as someone who's getting married in September, that's a crucial position that Alex just steps up onto. Whether, yeah. I mean, I'm assuming he'll follow through and they'll follow through. You'll have to keep watching okay. to find out. Yeah. Well, and I love how he then says to Judy, like, London, come on. And yeah. she's like, uh, uh, uh. But, you know, she's like, That's not how you all. make decisions. <laughs> but he, I mean, this to me is so endearing. This is one of the reasons why I love this character. 
sure, he's a goofball and he's maybe thinking about himself and he's not so logical, <laughs> smart with relationships. Adult. But he adults, yeah. right? But he his heart is in the right place. Yeah. And my heart goes out to him when he was disappointed about not being a groomsman. I think yeah. most adults have been in that position where you're like, maybe I'll make the cut, and then you don't, and he just so doesn't. You know? he, wa- he wants to be at the center of everyone else's life, he and does. he's always surprised to find out that he's not. Yeah. And and you, thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder where you got that. Mm-hmm. Maybe as a writer, you lifted mm-hmm. it from your own page. <laughs> uh, Judy actually says... I have to put my son first, mm-hmm. otherwise he won't call me when he's in college. Yeah. Because she knows that Alex really wants to be first. He wants mm-hmm. to walk into her apartment with some ice cream and be like, drop your kid. Yeah. I have to talk to you. My friend's getting married. But he brought the ice cream also ice for cream. Clark. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Some credit. Sweet. I'm he's always sweet. like the Alex cheerleader. No, he is <laughs> You're sweet. on his side, I love that. He's yeah. so very yeah. sweet. He is sweet. But he's a lot to root for. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know? Yeah, he does have We a talk lot about this for. often. Can I ask you quickly? Like. I would say, who are you? But I'll say, <laughs> who do you sympathize with the most? Uh, I Valor I tend to write Alex. the Alex character uh, as yeah. well as anyone, I think. <laughs> um, most of the writing staff is women, and they write the other women characters a little better yeah. than I do. But that said, I sympathize with all of the characters. Yeah. I love all of them yes. as flawed and messed up as they yeah. all are. We get mad at Val a lot, but yeah, we'll we get do. there. Val's had a tough season. <laughs> we do. Tough season. And yeah. so I, I wanted to talk to you about that, because I don't think I can talk about Laura before mm-hmm. talking about Val. Yeah. So... I just got awful. This is a god awful episode for Val. So <laughs> Val, isn't learned, every episode it, a terrible episode? But for recently, Val. it's just, but it's getting worse. worse. Yeah. yeah. So we'll go through all the relationships that Val has and how she's sabotaging every single solitary one of them, <laughs> starting with herself, of course. But so she learns that Leah's getting married, and she has this really negative reaction, like, mm. oh, it must be for a green card. She just doesn't have an inner to be happy for Leah. Yeah. Oh, Val, that comment. So, I'm just like, who says so, that out loud? Yeah. Val does. Val does. Val does. <laughs> Val does. But then we get into the really complicated stuff. Val in a relationship. Mm. So she's dragged in Jack, like sort of beat him to submission because mm-hmm. she was he was on you know reprieve from mm. sex and that's over now. And so now they're starting to have a relationship. At least in Jack's mind, he's comfortable with her. He walks in the door. He puts his shoes around. She's he's on the bed. He's yep. all mm-hmm. chill. And she's, you see, she just can't be comfortable. She yes. just doesn't want to be happy. I think she's just the type of person who wants to be unhappy, and so she creates those situations. What do you think? So is that yeah, true? no, I think it's especially this year. You know, she had this thing happen to her at the start of the season that, that threw her sense of self totally out yes. the window. Mm. And this whole season for her is trying to find out what her real self is. Mm. And what she's doing is alienating everyone around her. And she's, she's clawing for something that she's not getting yeah. and everyone else is feeling the effects of it. But she's clawing in a way that she could never get it. It would no. actually never ever be possible to get it. And you have a couple really interesting single inputs to her that she completely knows, understands and rejects. And the first one comes from Jack when he says, oh, you know, cause uh, Val says, well, Alex hasn't been calling me back. Mm-hmm. So she's lamenting about this brother that she used to have around all the time and doesn't. And he says, oh, well, maybe he's getting off the codependent carousel. Mm-hmm. I love that Val's phrase, Val's still riding too. around. And <laughs> Val is so... Great writing. Depe- yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's it, in Val's mind, everyone else is dependent uh-huh. or everyone else is, you know, she does the same thing later with Ethan uh-huh. and... Because um, I like the carousel image because it goes around yeah. and it goes and over there. It never goes fantastic. anywhere. Yes. Yeah. 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 And Jack, I love how he's so often the voice of reason. Yeah. Yes. You know? He's a real guy. I mean, he leaves his character. shoes around, but he tells it how it is. And yeah. Val doesn't want to hear that. I and think he's she there really. For her no matter what. She wants to be on the hotel with him like season two. She wants yeah. that version. Yes. Yeah. And and Jack at least has emotional intelligence. Mm-hmm. I mean, his life might be a little bit of a wreck, but he's getting it together and he's. Not sexual intelligence, apparently. No. But well, emotional. He's working on that. Yeah, yeah emotional. He's on it. Just exactly. the emotional part, yes. <laughs> but so there's that really, I think. Um, telling episode scene with Jack and then Mm. she goes with Ethan and she's sort of dishing on Jack like Mm. Jack didn't give me what I wanted he puts his shoes everywhere and so Ethan sort of being that friend that sort of maybe takes you down a notch they Mm. think they're supporting you by saying yeah yeah he's honest with her yeah but he's he's also but he's as honest as he can be getting the very twisted version Mm -hmm. that Val gives him which is not really the real version so so Ethan says oh so the relationship's just going to be on his terms then it's not really. Not at it's all. Not it's at totally on Val's It's a real, it's a real relationship, yeah. Right. So it's totally on Val's But terms. Val, that sticks with her. Uh-huh. That, yeah. like, okay, I guess, you know, do I have to defend myself here? Mm. Or she's, she's just disgruntled and unhappy. And I was so mad at her when she left Jack at yeah. the party. Like, 
I hate when people go to the extreme with a fight, you know? Like, you can have a fight, and you can work through it, and you can get over it, but she walks away. And this yeah. is a constant thing with her. People come to love her, come to support her, and be friends with her. She just slaps them in the face and walks away. Every opportunity she has for happiness, she sabotages. Yeah, I think it's a cry for help, and uh, no one's listening in the way she wants them to listen. Yeah. Well, well she's I feel like, does she even know the way that she wants them no, to listen? No, she doesn't. No. She really doesn't. And, and, it's and so she, no one really can listen yeah. to her, because mm -hmm. sometimes she isn't really telling the real story just because she doesn't know herself that well mm -hmm. and like here for example um, she Ethan also says like well you know why are you in this relationship and she says well I'm staying because I Jack is in recovery and I wouldn't want him to not to be in recovery mm -hmm. which is such complete baloney she's a martyr so she thinks so she's yeah. right she's really making it out to be the victim but she's the one who pulled him yeah. mm -hmm. from recovery and if anything it's that she can't lay off the sex with him yeah. And it, it's just so sad. And Jack, our yeah. happy Jack, you know, they're at the engagement so party. Much, yeah. And he's like, I feel a very mediocre macarena yeah. coming on. <laughs> he's like, want to see these mediocre dance moves? I'm and like, I do. Like, she's yeah. like, no, I want to go home. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, why are you doing this? And mm -hmm. so she says this to me. It was so poignant. And Michaela Watkins, mm -hmm. can we just shout out to Michaela Watkins? Mm -hmm. This is so well played almost on the verge of breaking mm. she says what ethan said trying to defend herself beat back for herself she says oh i guess this relationship is just on your terms but she can't even look at him because she knows that that's baloney yeah, yeah at a party for her friends at a party yeah. for her friends right <laughs> come on but then he calls her out on it and now uh, she's mad and doesn't have the emotional bandwidth but to every deal with week it. we're yeah. like okay she's gonna sink lower and eventually she's gonna rise when is the rise wait, wait, please because we can't take it much longer <laughs> look we... i i want the rise. the rise i want the rise too we need more episodes to get she the hasn't rise gone low enough she's got to hit rock she's got to hit rock bottom which <laughs> yeah. i think you'll see in the next two episodes yeah you, it's getting worse you right? get Before you get real better. um you get a background for her and you see a side of her in a world of vows that you didn't see before, and oh. I think that gives some um, color for all of this. Please tell me she doesn't lose Jack. You're gonna have to keep watching. <laughs> Don't take I away my Jack. I actually feel like she, she doesn't deserve Jack right no, now. No, she she's got She's got so much to work out she on her not. own. And she also doesn't deserve Laura, so she treats Laura so horribly, I think. Mm. First of all, I, I really, it's, it's it, interesting to me that there are women writers and, and directors here, mm -hmm. because that mother-daughter bond is completely yeah. not there. And I know that teenagers, particularly self-sufficient teenagers mm -hmm. can just be like, oh, back off, I, I got plans and I'm with my phone mm -hmm. and, and I'm back off. sell your table. Uh, yes. <laughs> but here, her daughter's taking pictures of things that we learned she wants to sell on eBay. She's trying to get money. We sort of Hence slowly piece sale. together, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That she's maybe taking a trip. Mm -hmm. uh, Val just could care less. She walks right in, she's on her phone, she's like, what are you doing? Mm. Her daughter answers, she doesn't mm. even look. Yes. I love seeing Val's frustration with the group text, because group <laughs> oh, yeah. emails and group texts drive everyone insane, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's why so she didn't want to be a bridesmaid. Yeah. Right. Like, who would want to? I yeah. Her to, in that situation was spot me, on. that is Valerie's redeeming qualities. Yeah. That she doesn't want to be a bridesmaid, because mm. I have to say, being a bridesmaid would be the god-awful worst thing. I've never been a bridesmaid. <laughs> oh, no. I never want to be a bridesmaid. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Well, I'm, I feel pretty safe in no, this situation. No, I've gotten told yes, that I'm the most chill bride ever so there you go. but maybe too chill oh uh, that's my co-host chill <laughs> yeah. bride that she is chill bride. Nice. Good Hashtag girl. Chill bride. but <laughs> and and then later so michaela not michaela valerie's getting ready for the engagement party mm. and she's so just like oh, i could care less about this again michaela does such a great job with her body movement she's yeah. so funny even if the dialogue is really severe uh, and she just lays in to Laura. Uh, Fix this table. I guess she's mad finally, because... Finally, though. I gave her a little credit there because she's finally saying, take responsibility for your yep. actions. And Laura does it in a very Laura way, which at first... Can I talk about that right now? Go ahead. Can I go there? No, course, because at first I was like, you little twit. Like, how could you sell her coffee or her dining room table? But then I was like, no, she's not like such a twit. She's such a teenager. That's mm -hmm. exactly the thing. So oh, I, I forgive her so more than I've ever forgiven Val. Really? That's oh. such a teenager thing to do, just to have zero concern for other people. She doesn't care how much she spends on that table, you yeah. know? Oh, I what felt is differently. I felt like... Her, pan her parents have totally abandoned her. Mm -hmm. And when her father was like, oh, yeah, no, my daughter doesn't want to stay and have lunch with us and practically kicks her out mm -hmm. of any kind of family yeah. scene, that she's just like, screw it, I'm selling your table. You guys don't <laughs> care about me, I don't care about you right back. But I can see the father's perspective, too, of like, oh, this teenager <gasps> doesn't want to hang out with us old fogies, you know? Oh, if you, I mean, they don't even live together.
good no. anymore. If you don't see your daughter, wouldn't you be like, baby, he needs to reach out? Yeah, yeah, in a number of ways. Oh, he's horrible. I'm just to be a I know, no, you're so right. No, and I'm just, I don't know. I just so yeah. please explain this to me. Yeah, no, I think you're both right. Um, <laughs> look, I, I think Laura, uh, the entire season is looking for someone to pay attention to her. And Val's too busy trying to figure out who she is mm -hmm. and doesn't have time for Laura, and she needs Laura to be okay with herself, and Laura's obviously not okay. So Laura's selling the table and doing this stuff to try to be seen by Valerie, but Valerie's eyes are closed because she's worried about herself. And yeah. yes. it's all sort of come to a head at the end of this episode where we get the realization that Laura's gone, and Val just has like let the boat sail out to sea, basically. Uh, and so... Help me out. Does does Val at the end of this? She's so engrossed in her own tears at the mm -hmm. end of the engagement party, and perhaps going for a drink with Ethan as she's smoking <sighs> outside. Please do it's not like, sleep with oh Ethan, Val. Oh no, I will be so no. mad. Would she? Oh. I don't know. It seems like we're Xander, headed. Tell us. Tell us. You're gonna oh. want. You're gonna know in the next Damn episode. Oh. The next episode is gonna reveal <laughs> oh. a lot of things. A lot of things will come out. Yeah, but does she even realize that her daughter's gone? <laughs> no, of course not. When will she notice? Yeah, It'll she, be days. Like she notices <laughs> that the wine's gone, but yeah. she doesn't notice that her daughter's and gone. And I like that the drinking has progressed too because it used to be more wine, more wine, drinking wine by no, myself. Oh, now it's straight up. Vodka, yeah. straight yeah. Out. <laughs> Things are getting bad. It's Things bad for everyone bad. there. Things are getting bad. Only okay, Leah I'm, and Leah are, are uh, having uh, happiness. Thank <laughs> God for them. Thank yeah. you for giving us them. them yeah. We need that. We definitely need that. Also, I really liked when Alex straight up said to Val, this is what you wanted. You yeah. wanted right. me to disengage from you. Oh, I love that. You. Oh, yeah. yes. Right. So he is clear enough to recognize that. And I said last week, we talked a little bit about maybe they needed distance in order to get closer to other people because it was codependent. That's what this season is, that yeah. they're living apart and they're doing it for the first time and mm -hmm. obviously the effects are really detrimental yeah. to Valerie and to Alex to a certain extent, although he seems to be doing better than she is. Heck yes. Yeah, no, yeah. he seems to be doing well, I yeah. would say. like He's being healthier, certainly. Heck yes, yeah. and he it allows more room in his life mm -hmm. for other people like Ray to yeah. influence him in a positive way because Val just takes everybody down, mm -hmm. really. So he needs to get away from her, I would say. And I like, Everyone too, does. that he says yeah. everybody does. <laughs> I like, too, that he sort of says, like, this is great. Just have a good time, yeah. Val. Because yeah. it's what you wanted. You're with Jack. I'm with Judy. This yeah. is great. Just, like, have a good time. And, of course, she can't. That, she can't. Nope. She's, she has no capability. She's in too being much happy. pain, which yeah. I, I completely understand. So, um... Tell us a little bit about how you came up for this series, because I think you were writing this when you were living with your sister. I was, yeah? and she was dating my best friend, and I wrote the show because they would hang out in the apartment, ah. and eventually I felt like it had to be a, it was a story I wanted to tell about a weird brother and sister relationship with a friend <laughs> in the middle, and it evolved so into great. this yeah. three years after the fact, but it was... You know, my sister and I are close, not like not like these two characters, but a lot sure. of it. Yeah, yeah, real, real close. Codependent uh -huh. Sander. And then you slept with No, we're good her. now. We're good now. Um, but yeah, you, t you yeah. take this sort of seed of an idea, and it blossoms into something with these characters who take mm -hmm. on the life of their own, essentially. I heard an interview with Michaela that she, in the audition, said, okay, so when do Alex and Val sleep together? <laughs> She's not Will the only happen? one to ask. A lot of people <laughs> ask that. Yeah, there's that so sort of there is that under <laughs> there's an underlying feeling of sort of like grossly overclose <laughs> siblings that everyone is turned off by, but you also want them to be happy together. You, it's it's confusing. We want yeah. it to be confusing, so yeah. they're not going to sleep together. It, it's worry. funny because I I never think of them sleeping together, but I equate them to. Siamese twins mm -hmm. or yeah. any kind of, yeah. you know, any sort of physicality difference, mm -hmm. physical difference is so painful for them mm -hmm. that to me it seems like they're twins of some sort. Yeah. They're symbiotic. Well, they need each other. Yeah. Yes, they really do. Well, everyone's yeah. seen Laura having sex. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> well, how did you come to that conclusion that it was going to be this type of family? Because this show made me feel so conservative and I never knew I was <laughs> conservative. Oh, I feel the same way and yeah. I don't think I'm conservative. Yeah. 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 The scene when she walked in on Laura having sex was like, I'm going to the grocery store and then left. Yeah, I know some I know some parents and families who operate yeah. like this to a certain extent mm. and you know in, in Los Angeles in this modern era that we live in yeah. it's not it's not totally out of the realm yeah. so I am <laughs> conservative then yeah well I think Apparently those people I are on too. those people are on the extreme I, yeah. I still you know it's television so you have to <laughs> there's a specific type of character that we're that we're drawing mm. but you know there's certainly more promiscuous than I am in my <laughs> life for most of the people I know so but it's, well, part of me thinks, you know, is it empowering to have your teenager be that sexual? Is it a good thing? You know, oh. it's making me question what I previously mm. thought, which is a beautiful thing with a show like this. Yeah, we, we don't want to put value judgments on this yeah. stuff, and I think that's the most important thing, is like, yeah. there are consequences for these things. These characters are messed up, and they mm. do really bad things, and you hate them at times. 
a lot of it's probably because they have no boundaries and they haven't been told how to act or how to sort of socialize. But yeah. on the other hand, they're free in other ways and they're able to see the world in a certain way. So, uh. you know, you get the good and the bad. We just we right. don't try to say one is right or one is wrong. Right. So. And I understand this for the adults. It's harder for me for the minor mm-hmm. who you just your heart breaks when she has no guidance. Yeah. And so, of course, she's missing Casey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She really is looking for anybody who could give her anything. And she thought so that was going to be her mother figure, and right. Casey took off. So right. that's hard. It's You feel Laura's being abandoned left and right. Left and yeah. right. It's just breaking my heart. Mm-hmm. So, But another thing I read about you that's very interesting, so this series really was predicated on online dating. Mm-hmm. But you yourself have never done online dating. Not seriously. I did a little research, but nothing. I've, I haven't met people, long-term girlfriends online. So. Okay, wait. So you never really did online dating, but you wrote a show about online dating. My mm-hmm. entire writing staff did a lot of online <laughs> so we which is mostly did, women right like yes a lot six? of women and yes that we when we did the interviews a lot of it was about what's your online dating experience oh my God. are you divorced are you oh single tell me about who you you know what's dated and personal? all of that and the ones who were the most eager to share and have the best stories tended to be the ones who were writing on the show. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's well, so wonderful. we both met our partners online. Yeah. You did. Oh, that's oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Being We've been comment. together five years, and yep. you guys have been together? going to be five years in October. Yeah. Congratulations. Ah, but it was my first and only online date, which people hate wow. to hear. But it you was. nailed it out of the gate. Oh, wow. That Good was so you. not my experience. I mean, not out of I had a lot of dating over <laughs> You know? Like, I oh. kissed some frogs. Yeah, not not me. Yeah, no, no, I really years and years yeah. of getting on and getting off and mm-hmm. getting on and getting yeah. off. And, but it worked. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I did. How did you grow up with Snoo? I can't ever Snooger? say Snooger. Oh my god, that that name. It we went through over a hundred names really? and we could not clear a name legally. And we had ah. things we liked and we had things we didn't like that might have cleared. And finally, that was the one that. We were like, let's take two words and combine them, like <laughs> Zillow, which is like zillion and pillow, and we're like Snooger, which is like, um, God, what were the two words? We're like, I don't even remember. It was such a traumatic no. experience. <laughs> Snot and booger. That's what oh, people God. say. No, it's it was a no. uh, it was a thing that we just were like, this sort of makes sense. It could be real. It cleared. Let's do <laughs> let's it. And go. it kind of took on a life of its own. <laughs> I had the hardest time just saying the word the other day when I was hosting. I was just hosting mm-hmm. by myself. I was like snooker, schnoo, schnoo, <laughs> schnooker, like and then yeah. I was like by myself in this room. I'm like, I gotta stop. I'm yep. sorry, guys. Yep. It's good to see this. Uh, so I have another question for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you you wrote this at 24. Mm-hmm. You pitched probably around 26. Yeah. Got green lighted at 27, something like this. I think that's yeah. Maybe I wrote maybe 25. The draft really okay. came out. So yeah, okay. no, it was a long. I mean, this is a long process. It takes a while. You write a pilot and then your agents read it and they give you notes and you write another draft and then it takes months to get the right people to read it. So my real question wasn't going to be how long it takes, but how the heck did you do it? I won the lottery. That's really what it is. Like, it's right place, right time. Mm. Jason Reitman had been coming off a movie, had been trying to do television, could not find the script that he wanted to do. We happen to have the same agent. My agent said, he will like this if you will wait for him to read it. I think you should wait. And I waited, you know, a decent amount of months. And when he read it, he did like it. And that was what what was required to let Hulu say, okay, we'll make this show. Jason wants to do it. We don't care that you haven't done a lot of TV. We've uh-huh. got this great director who wants to do a show. Let's do this. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah, right place, wow. right time. Seriously. But you deserve it. Uh, oh, yeah. thank you very yes, much. Right. I but appreciate I, it. I can, you know, I feel like so many times an actor will come out or a director or a writer and people will say, oh my God, an overnight sensation. You were no, working there, for no, years. Oh, no. I'm sure there was yes. a lot of work in between. I was an so assistant for four years. That? Yeah, so, I mean, I was like cutting my teeth properly, pushing a mail cart and answering phones. Like, yeah, yes. Can't talk about it. <laughs> not sure in public. But, but you do have other um, projects, writing projects mm-hmm. in the hopper, you were saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a couple other shows I'm working on and yeah. movies that can't get made at the moment that I'm hoping to get made in the future. So, yeah. so you, you always work on movies, yeah. Yeah, you always I think as a writer you always do as many as you can until one goes because it's so rare to get anything made that like if a movie were to get made I would jump for joy. I have no expectation it'll ever get made. This show takes up 90% of my bandwidth and now I'm on hiatus so I can do those other things, but you never expect anything to get made, including this show. I had no expectation yeah. it would get made. Are you one of those writers that thinks it's important to write every single day? Um, I used to. Now I'm, I mean, I try to write four or five times a week. Um, when I was first starting out, I wrote every day Uh and I wrote many hours and I was really bad. So that was important. I think I'm a better writer now and don't, yeah, I don't need the practice. Like I needed the practice early on. I needed to really fail and write a bunch of really bad stuff. And now 
I can write a pretty good scene, so I don't need to sure sit there can. for. Well, I mean, like you, you realize you're like, oh, the, I know how this is going to be shot, how it's going to work. I think this I will see. work as a scene. I don't need to spend five hours workshopping this scene, which three or four years ago I would have sat and rewritten that scene ten times. Nice. And what is the atmosphere like on set? Because you've got these incredible comedians, mm -hmm. and yet they're doing drama. And I'm going to say pretty diehard drama, you <laughs> yeah. know, pretty serious drama. And then Jason, depending on if he's directing mm -hmm. or not, and then you've had Gillian Robespierre. Mm -hmm. Mike Bob. Fantastic name. Yeah. Uh, she, she <laughs> we just directed uh, Fire Sale, mm -hmm. App 11. So you've got, you know, incredible directors all around you. What is the atmosphere like on set? It's really friendly. Everyone's really nice. Like, I, we have the nicest crew you can imagine our actors are all really smart. They've so created great. their own shows, yeah. they're friendly, they love each other, we all right. hang out outside of work. Like, mm -hmm. We know how lucky we are to make this show and everyone wants it to just go as smoothly as possible because we know you only get one or two of these in your life, so yeah. make it last. And yeah. like everyone's just a professional, so it's nice. We shoot in LA, everyone gets to go home to their families and their beds at the end yeah, of the night. Yeah, the network is great to us. They let us do the thing we want to do. So honestly, it's like it's a dream. It's a great yeah. it's a great place to be and I'm lucky to have made 3 years of it. And did you envision it? So Jason comes on, you're mm -hmm. over the moon, I'm yeah. sure. And did the two of you sit together and say this is going to go to Hulu? Or mm. did you envision Hulu was the right place for you? No, we we had a feeling that a streaming service would be right mm -hmm. for it because it doesn't fit into a nice nice neat little box of what it is. Right. Um and we took it out to a couple places, and Hulu was, it, again, right place, right time. They wanted to make bigger stuff with bigger budgets that, that it's a little more serious television. And I think we were like the perfect timing of like, oh, we had two scripts and Jason, and they wanted to do it. So we were like, yes. we don't really know that much about Hulu, but they get the <laughs> yes. vision, and yeah. they're going to give us the money for the budgets, and they want to make 10 episodes. So like, yeah, we're going to do that. I mean, why not? And awesome. here we are three years later, and they've been great partners. Who That's were the right. first actors to come on? Uh, Michaela was the first one to ever read. Yeah, um, oh, wow! Like Great. ever read any of my words I've ever written. So, oh my gosh. and what an actress! Oh. To read. It was amazing. <laughs> like literally the first read, you're like, oh, it's gonna work. This is great. <laughs> like one for one, right out of the box. Oh my um, gosh! Yeah. <laughs> Wow, and she's an incredible actress. She's amazing. And I'm so happy for her because I feel what this script does for her is it really shows the breadth of what she can do. She can do anything. So, you know, I think of her as a just a commensurate comedian, and yeah. here she is doing drama so strong. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, we like to challenge them. I mean, they're all good comedic actors, but doing drama, they probably don't get to do as much in their other career you know, choices. So mm. for us, it's like, Oh, we're gonna make you do hard stuff. You're gonna cry. You're gonna be really internal. Have all these difficult things. Like, I think that's fun for them. They like um, that. It's yes. a challenge. Right. But yeah. pepper it with a little bit of very yeah, subtle humor. Yeah, but be fun. Be know? fun while yeah. you are heartbroken yeah. and destroyed. <laughs> just, just a smile here and there, please. A little subtlety. Yeah. Well, I, I thought this was the best episode that Michaela's ever done. Yeah. Because yeah, she was great. on the brink of crying, mm. saying to Jack, "Well, this relationship is just on your terms." Then, mm -hmm. like trying to pick a fight, but she didn't even because she's Have just so yeah, yeah. she yeah. couldn't even do it anymore. Yeah. yeah, she loves to pick fights with people and tear it down and screw uh -huh. up the situation, and she couldn't even do that anymore. Yeah. She was yeah. so broken. You had nine out of thirteen episodes directed by women this season. Yeah, yes. congratulations! Thank you. Yes. We've got great, How did great that directors. Happen? Did you decide at the get-go we want to have a lot of female directors because of the two female leads, or we? I mean, not specifically. Mm. I will say, last season we had, I think, six of 13 were directed by women, which we were happy about. And this year, you know, Helen Estabrook, who's one of the other EPs, does a lot of the director hiring, and we talked about it early on and decided, you know, what are the movies we've really liked? What are the good indie films we've, we've sparked to? And it happened to be a lot of films directed by women. And so we just decided, let's do a first round. We'll just offer to all women and see if we get them. And we got, I think, you know, four, four out of five or five out of six, and then... They're like, okay, I guess we've got a lot of women this year, and they're great, great, and it's like, these are people that both of us have been dying to work with forever, so for us, it's just like a dream come true. This is like, yeah. oh, we get to hang out with Carrie and Brownstein Lake for two Bell. weeks, and Lake Bell, and, and Lynn Shelton, and yes. like, you know, Amy York Rubin, and Gillian, Gillian Robespierre. Like, these are great, great directors, and for us, like, we just want to make more stuff with them, so yeah. it's selfish on our part. We're like, oh, you're great, do our show, and then also, <laughs> let's be friends and hang out. <laughs> Let's have dinner parties in exactly, my backyard. Exactly, exactly. Well, so I have a question there. With so many female writers and so mm -hmm. many female directors, I would have thought there might be more of a mother-daughter bond popping yeah. up. Tell There's me about that. There's a lot of that. complexities in a mother-daughter relationship. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. You know? It's tough. I mean, that, it was something that we talked about 
throughout the season is mm -hmm. keeping that relationship believable, but also servicing their characters properly and right. giving them arcs. And yes. ultimately, like, it's a hard season for both Laura and Valerie. It's really tough. They're at times really unlikable and doing things that people really don't relate to. And, like, I empathize. I totally get it. I think it's really important for the arc of their characters. And, like, if we get more episodes, I promise redemption. Like, <laughs> you, you we, will here first we will turn it. Four. We will turn it. And I have thoughts for season four that is fully Great. redemptive in a way that I really think would bring it around. But you, you can't do the same thing every year. Time. And you mm -hmm. can't have them have... You know, characters in happy, happy characters live in stasis, and it's not interesting to watch. Right. So, you know, you would get something that would be neutered and, and just not that interesting. Yes, so, not interesting. yeah, you may hate parts of it. You may relate to parts of it. Mm -hmm. um, you may hate me, which I understand. <laughs> but, like, ultimately, we do not hate it you. services the show, I promise, <laughs> in what I think is a good way. Well, let me ask you a little bit about that, because I think that's fascinating and cruel at the same time. <laughs> so Hulu does not tell you if you have a season four. So you have to write as if you will never write again, mm -hmm. and yet you have to leave a door open for yourself that you will write again. So yeah. how do you do Talent. that? Yeah, well, every season finale we've done has had a way that it could be a series finale, but also opens I, a door for further stuff. I think the end of season tricky. one, the end of season one is Alex and Valerie are gonna live together regardless. It's like, mm -hmm. fuck it, we're doing this. And that could have been the end. That could have been like, okay, right. these yeah. two are together forever and like Happy nothing's gonna stop them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Season two, you end with the death of the patriarch and that's like, right. oh, we're gonna live apart and now we're gonna try a healthy, happy relationships. That could be an end. Like, okay, they've grown enough to be apart and like, we're good. And season three, you'll have to see how it ends. But like, there's stuff that could carry on for further seasons, and there's stuff that could be like, oh, there's finality here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to walk that line, which is not easy, but that's part of the fun. Do you yeah. have a desired end, end in mind if you knew how I mean, the series would end? I, not that we want it to end. We want I have thoughts. I mean, friends. I have thoughts. Like, I, I, again, I want the characters to be redeemed. I want mm. them to find some level of happiness while that's it's good. still being believable. Like, I don't want some series that crushes them in some dark Shakespearean <laughs> tragedy. Like, that's I'll not die. what this is. Okay. Like, you have to have ups and downs, and I hopefully, if we can end it on our terms, we'll have end on a bittersweet up. It's okay. probably the best we can hope for. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah I'll take it. You can't all up. of a sudden just turn yeah, it into, Yeah, like, no, no, no. Hey, guys, yeah. we're hanging out at dinner all the time. Wee! <laughs> Well, um, we only have time probably for one more question, mm. uh, but I, I wanted to ask you, and, and maybe you want to sneak in a final question too, but wow. I'll, I'll try to be quick. So I think it's fascinating. You have all these female directors mm -hmm. and you know, you have to keep the continuity of the feel of the show and yet every director is going to bring something new. So I think that's tricky in and of itself. The editing, mm -hmm. I think, is really important to the storytelling yeah. because you guys have been doing, uh, I'm going to just blatantly use the term funny cuts but that doesn't mean anything it yeah. just means that cuts where I wouldn't expect them to be cuts and I think that abruptness and and how separate the stories are mm -hmm. running you can feel all three characters diverging you know because the edits keep them so separate yeah. yeah it's just could you talk to me a little bit about the editing out of this I yeah think it's important. sure no uh, that's intentional and I'm glad you noticed that it is it's hard to tell a story in 30 minutes with all these characters right. and giving them separate arcs and not putting them all in the same room all the time mm -hmm. and our editors know that and Jason Reitman from the start has emphasized you know when you change worlds with a different cut change the sound volume change the look oh. of it change the color like like really jarring your audience keeps them invested and engaged like whether huh. it's just going from a really quiet silent scene to like a loud musical beat where you go oh what, what's going on here like that keeps you involved in the world in a way that I think is necessary because if you don't have that you you miss stuff you look at your phone and you tune out and then you're like oh wait what's going on I, I've totally lost this thread right oh so it's intentional to keep us on the edge of our seats yeah you want some of that I mean you can there are moments you want to lull your audience into a false sense of security and parts right. where you want to give them a bunch of loud stuff that like keeps them on the edge of their seat <laughs> see through Xander yes, we are getting that. lessons from Jason Reitman yeah so thank yeah. you so much for you're that. welcome do you have any advice for young writers out there um yeah, I mean, just write more than you think. I, I wrote, I think I wrote 12, I, I probably wrote eight or nine movies and three pilots that are literally in locked up in my hard drive somewhere, never yeah. to be seen, and they're terrible. So, 
it takes a while. It took me four, four or five years of like writing a lot of stuff. So mm. you always think your first ones are good. I thought it too. Everyone thinks it. <laughs> they're not. Like I, I promise they're, they're not. I like no, they're that. terrible. I've reread them. They're awful. Like <laughs> okay. like after six or seven, then then you can start to think, okay, maybe I'm maybe I'm in the zone. So I'm just that's my piece of advice is you always need to write more than you think. That's great. Yeah, I think like looking at your old scripts is like looking at yourself as a twelve year old with braces. Mm. Yes. You're just like, God, make that picture. Why go did someone away? take a picture? Why are they- and why does it still exist? Oh, I know. But well, they're better than what a lot of people can write, I'm sure. Of course. <laughs> Thank you. So we are looking forward to episode 12 and 13. Yeah. And yes. then Hulu, you heard it here. We want more. Yes. We want more. They want so more. They want we want more. season Please. four. I got, I got to get redemption. Please. This is really what I want. I say, I want redemption. We need so. to see Val in an upswing. Please. Yeah. Please. God. Yeah. And we want to have Michaela on the show. So you yes. got to have a season four. It's just that simple. Uh, Xander, where can everybody find you? Let them know. Like in the world? Uh, well, so well, if you want them at your <laughs> doorstep, you I live in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm on Twitter. It's just my name at Twitter, and I'm I don't you really use anything else um, social media wise. So if you send me a message, I will write back and. That's the best way to do it. Look for me on Twitter. Awesome. Okay, and it would be at Xander Lehman. Yeah, is that that's right? me. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, that's how to find him, folks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where can they find you? I'm Kaylee Rose, and you can find me on all the social media platforms at Kaylee Rose and my animated series, check it out, Between Busts. And I'm Elizabeth Alfano. It's been great to be the host tonight. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Dinner Party CHGO. I'm on Facebook, people. You can find me there at Elizabeth Alfano. And all my celebrity interviews are on thedinnerparty.tv. Gosh, I wish we didn't have to go, but it's been mm-hmm. great to have you here. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having everybody. me. Thanks, everybody. Woo. Bye, peeps. Bye. Bye. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.